What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined, as always, by my two favorite co-hosts of all time in Matthew Spawnauer and Theo Ash. We have a great episode planned for you all today, and normally I say that out of formality. Today I mean it. We had maybe <laughs> the four best NFL games of the season back to back to back to back. We're going to go over all of them. But before we do that, Matt, Theo, how are you guys doing today? Doing wonderful. I'm doing great. We just got to talk about these games, man. I don't. <laughs> yeah, let's. I mean, we, we got we the, game, the games, games were okay, so okay. good. The <laughs> games were so good. I'm doing good, even though the Packers lost one of the more yeah. heartbreaking Packers games ever. And I'm still feeling jazzed to talk about this episode. That's how good yeah. these games were, where I was like watching football and I'm like, man, I love this sport, <laughs> right? This, like, I, <laughs> I, I didn't. I, the Packers game is like so. Like, we lost. All right, fine. This was still the best <laughs> weekend of football that I can ever remember. No, this is this is, why this the, is the most excited I've ever football. been to do the podcast. It, it's been great. It's been great so far, and I, I'm excited for the conference championship games. But before we get into all of that, just a reminder for everybody to rate us on Spotify. I think are we at 2,000 ratings yet? I'm not entirely sure. I didn't check today. But so. we still last time last time I checked we have a perfect five star. And then of course make sure to follow us on TikTok at Stay Hot Pod for some great content there as well. Now, enough formalities. Let's start with the game that just ended. Bill's Chiefs. Um, is it fair to say Josh Allen is top two? <laughs> well, he's the, oh, yeah. he's the closest thing to prime Cam Newton that you're gonna get. So yes. Um it's hard to imagine. I just said in a video that he was top three. It's hard to imagine that there's three guys that could do what he did. Um, and him him only making it to the divisional with how crazy good he'd played the last two games is a crime. Not even the last yes. two games. I mean, yeah. the last like month and a half, really. It's It's been... He got. He didn't make a Pro Bowl. It's so funny. I mean, he has undisputably vaulted himself in like the top... Undisputably top... Four, I think like like if you're thinking of him outside of the top four, you're crazy. I might put him <laughs> at two right now. Um, I might put him, I don't think you're crazy to put him at one right now. Josh Allen is has just been pinpoint. I mean, I mean, the game tonight was just it was just out of this world. You said it just out of this world. You said it last episode, the angel of death. I didn't make that up, by the way. I've seen that on Twitter. I don't know who made the angel of death up, but that guy's that guy's the he is. fucking angel He's of death. Him. <laughs> he is He's him. him. I, um, and Mahomes is him no. too. That like it takes two to tango to make maybe the greatest game it of does. all time. Mahomes, I mean, that first I can't remember the touchdown uh, to number thirteen. Was it thirteen in the end zone where he was like fall like Daniel getting tackled? Davis, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this was to Mahomes' touchdown. Oh, no, that's um, uh, where, that's uh, Pringle, Pringle yeah. right? Pringle, yeah. No, when he was getting tackled and and like as he's going down, hucks it up and led his wide receiver. Like to throw with anticipation while you're getting like tackled, right? Like like you're under this amount of pressure and you're still thinking ahead instead yes. of just being reactionary. It just it, insane. It's it's like it's like backyard football. Without the expected mistakes that would come from that play style, <laughs> right? It's right. like it's like he can run around forever and he'll throw anything to anyone, anytime. But minus the mistakes, minus the things that can cost you games. And I don't, I don't want to. Thirteen seconds left, needing a score and getting it is yeah ridiculous. That, there's no, is, there's no amount of time Madden. you can leave. That him. is literally Madden. Like I, and there's I nothing still, you can, like, yeah. Go, go, Blaine, go. The the closest thing I've ever seen to that is literally me playing Madden, <laughs> where I needed nine seconds to score with Aaron okay, Rodgers Blaine. and I got it. <laughs> so like that's, but like that's what I'm like. That's video game type stuff that Mahomes and Allen are doing because Allen put together what we thought was the game winning drive. Yeah. And it just didn't matter. I mean, yeah. Too Mahomes much time left on the good. clock with 14 seconds is ridiculous, and there's just no answer to beat them. Like you can get mad at the play calling like, oh, they should have blitzed. Oh, they should have dropped all these guys back in coverage. Yeah. Oh, they should have done this. They should have done that. Mahomes has the answers, dude. Like and so does Allen. But like for most of the game, you know, these are not two real blitz. Like there was not a whole lot of blitzing happening here. Again, like too high. Put a bunch of guys into coverage and hope yeah. you can hold up. 
And it's worked on these quarterbacks earlier in the year. Like that was a decent strategy against them earlier in the year, but they, they figured it out and, and there's just no they, answer. They've, they've gotten you can bring more. The, yeah. They, I think they've just gotten more patient, right? Just yeah. like sitting and like letting the underneath stuff develop. Like, you know, we talk about in zone coverage a lot of times. I, I, I remember you brought it up, Theo, the guy, you know, when you're in zone, you just get deeper as the play yeah. goes on. So I mean, these guys, they're just waiting for the uh, underneath stuff to open up the play. I want to, bro, Tyreek Hill, where he just yeah. like caught it over the middle and then just outran everybody. He's I, fast. He's, he's fast. the only player in the NFL that can make that play. I saw people say, oh, Jamar Chase can do that. Jamar no. Chase. He can almost Jamar do that. Chase can out, Jamar Chase can outrun people that are like close to him, right? Uh, Tyreek Hill is outrunning people that are like all over the field. He outran the entire defense. No one else does that. Not Tyreek. I've I've said it before on this podcast, right? I'm not misremembering that. That Tyreek Hill is my wide receiver one, and yes. he is. Yes, he's he is always, in my opinion, the best wideout in the league. And there are games where that does not look to be the case. With he he he's a little small. Sometimes he has bad drops. Um, there are plenty of games this year where he had like 12 yards total. But man, <laughs> man, it's like there's <laughs> there's no other player in the league who can do things that no one else in the league can do. Like he is the like I think I think Allen can do everything Mahomes can do. You know, I, I think like th- there's sometimes Derrick Henry does something that I think no other running back could do. Like some of his 99, like 90 yard touchdowns are like not even Chubb has that in him or not even Jonathan Taylor has that right. in him. But but Hill just, just – there's just no other wide receivers who have that in them. And he's just totally explosive and game-breaking in a way. Adams isn't and, and Diggs isn't and Cup isn't and all these different guys aren't. And that's why even though he's inconsistent, he's still the best in the league for me um, because of plays like that. And as a returner, I mean, you saw him set up the the – like I think if they had him at returner all the time – He'd, he'd go down as like one of the best returners, if not the best returner ever, because he was he was an all pro his rookie year doing that. And then they kind of stopped doing it. And they in special situations, they'll put him back there. And you saw it tonight. Big return, almost broke it for a touchdown. He's just he's just a weapon unlike anything else, man. And yeah, he's he's tough to contain, especially in games that like go to overtime and Mahomes well, is throwing it all over. One of those plays is going to get broken off big. The problem is you've got a quarterback who can get it to him like nobody else can and a receiver who... Right. That was a great throw by Mahomes, too. Yeah. That was a great throw by Mahomes. Anticipation, placement to hit him in stride so he didn't have to slow up. He was not open that entire route. Like, Mahomes kind of threw it before he totally broke open. That was a phenomenal throw by Mahomes as well, not just just on Hill. But, But yes. You're talking earlier about about how, how you beat either of those guys. Because there's not much you can do. And I think the solution is you need to win the coin toss in overtime. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that the NFL overtime rules are so garbage. They're um, not garbage. They are. Get a stop. Get a stop. Get a stop. No. Get a stop. Theo, I've been uh, thinking about this. Stop. I've been thinking about this for a while now. If you're in a ma- if you're in a game where it's back and forth on offense. You could not trust either defense to get a stop. If the Bills had gotten the ball first, they would have won. I, I, so believe, we, I would have bet my I would bet my life and soul on that. You could do that, but you know they're not entitled to this this free shot at it. I don't think they're it's entitled not, to it's it. Not being defense is part to of the game. Free shot. It's, yeah, defense how is a often, part of the game. Let the I'll give the other defense do a chance to show do drives that they deserve end to be a good defense. Like how often do drives end in touchdowns? It's like twenty percent. It's like one out of every five drives. So you have to stop them one drive, and then you get a shot. We're not talking about a game where the defenses were playing at a high level. Well, do we change the rules based on the game on the offense? Then the two problems with this argument. First off, if that's the case, then why not just go back to it's first person to score wins, and if you let up a field goal, you let up a field goal. Those are still worse. That's worse. Your odds of getting a stop are better than giving up a field goal. If we're going to look at it like that, and then second, that's true. There's a point. It's why true, but the there's a you point where it is too easy. There's go. there is a point. It was too easy when it was just a field goal. It was too easy when it was just a field goal. So they changed it to okay. 
if it's a touchdown, it's game over, but a field goal is a little bit too easy. So we're going to give the other team a chance if all they can get is a field goal. I agree with that. I think that that's a smart way to look at it. It is too easy if it's just a field goal. The other, the other problem is that in college football overtime rules, which I think is what most people would suggest outside of the weirdo two point conversion. You know what I mean when I say college overtime rules, uh, the defense still matters. You still have to get a stop. It's just that the coin toss, you're less scared of a coin toss in an offensive game. I, and even even if you think that uh, the overtime rules now are fair enough and that you can still win, which even if they were unfair, you could still make, you know, you can obviously uh, still They're win. They're not unfair. unfair Get a stop. That's not unfair but to even, ask. But even, even, if, even if they are unfair, would the game be better or worse if Josh Allen had gotten the ball? Better. <laughs> would it, but would <laughs> it have been here's, more fun here's to watch? another thing. It's it would have been more fun to watch, Give but both here's the thing: the ball. I think it would maybe be more fun to watch, but I also get concerned that the game starts to get on too long in these playoff games. The Bengals—they're going on to play the Bengals in the in the AFC Championship game. The Bengals have an extra day of rest on them already. If the if it was like college overtime rules, I mean, we see college overtime go on forever. All right, so so for the Bills to be losing a day. And then, or the Chiefs to be losing a day to the Bengals, and then to make them play on and on and on is also a little bit of a competitive disadvantage in my eyes. And it's like, why would that all right, be a well, disadvantage? Now they, the Chiefs can it, just get a stop. Just stop the, them. The Bills can get a stop. The Bills should just get a stop. All right. Like okay. neither yeah, defense like was going to get a stop. That is Maybe the they were. With these I think that that's. When, I think you're overrating. Games, you're overrating that, momentum right now. You're overrating. Oh, they're, they're, it's, it's not, not, not about momentum. momentum. It's not it's momentum. Not about momentum. The defenses are too tired. They're too it's tired. Impossible. So you're that's watching all the more Josh reason Allen, to just get how, the game how, over. How long with. did he, how long did these plays last? Where Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes were just running around in the backfield, and these DBs have to cover for like seven, you know, eight, nine, ten seconds. All the more reason to get the game over quicker. So they're not gas going into next week and you get a, you get a competitively odd Matt, you were talking about this uh, the other day. You're like, I wouldn't want to play a playoff game on Monday night. That's unfair, right? A Monday night playoff it game. It is unfair. So I don't know. I, I think like if you play this over this long ass overtime game and you, you make these overtime games, like not only, you know, a game isn't over with a touchdown. I don't, I, I just don't think it's that much to ask to not allow a touchdown. I think it is a little bit too much to ask, not to allow a f- even a field goal and a field goal wins the game in the other chance. But I don't think it's too much to ask not to allow a touchdown. I don't think it's that much I to think, ask. I think getting a stop is part I, of defense, is part of football. I think, getting, I think you have to get a stop regardless. You have to not allow a touchdown regardless. Um, and I think that it's just a less interesting, less fair way to end the game, especially when it's obviously turned into total shootout. And you know the team. You're less. It makes the coin toss matter more. You're less scared of a coin toss in college football. It sucks when you lose it. Still, it still does matter. Kind of, maybe more than it should. But it's far less than. Here's here's the solution. The All right, rock paper scissors instead of a coin toss. Put the game in the athlete's hand and win your rock paper scissors game to get the ball instead of choosing heads or tails and making it a pretty much a luck based thing. Here's the solution. Rock, paper, scissors, right? There's every team on a 53-man roster, you have to decide, do we carry a psychological rock, paper, scissors expert or do we fill that void with a real NFL player? And then that's a strategy thing. And rock, paper, scissors is, you know, you put the game in the team's hands, you study their their tendencies, and it's a little bit more you just, fair. You just rock, make paper, your, scissors. You, you, just ha- you find a, a rock, paper, scissors expert, and you make them play like long snap. Oh, no, you'd have to make it the head coaches. Yeah, you'd have to yeah make let's it. do it. Make the head coaches yeah, play rock, paper, paper, scissors, head. dude. Big strategy. Rock, rock, paper, the owners come down. Imagine and your job it. is on you the line. You know how hype that would be, a rock, rock paper, scissors. scissors. Imagine Jerry, they kept tying. Jerry Jones winning rock, paper, scissors to get the Cowboys the ball and the win. <laughs> that would be so hype, dude. Imagine like, <laughs> imagine Twitter, like they kept tying, like, oh my God, they're still going and it just gets more and more intense. Rock, paper, scissors to decide overtime. What's the harm? It would be fun as hell, dude. That would be fun. <laughs> it would be fun. But I still, um, I still would have liked to have seen Josh Allen get a shot. I would have too. But you know, I think, how about this? For the Super Bowl, both teams should get the ball because there is no game next week. All right. 
But when there's a game next, I mean, week, I, I think don't know. you could you could solve that problem. People by just over- like having all the people game. overreact. You could, just, you could solve that problem by just like not having all the games at like different days on different times. Maybe I don't know. I'll, anyway, 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 anyway. I don't know. I, I do kind of think that maybe the AFC should play both their games on Saturday, and the NFC should play both their games on Sunday. And that when you get to the Super Bowl, yeah, maybe there's an advantage one way or the other, but. You have two weeks, but it's of been rest two then, weeks, so be like, right? Yeah, no, it, yeah. It, it so gets then it pretty... wouldn't matter. I do think it's kind of bad to have a full day of rest gap. Even it's more than twenty four hours, really, when you start looking at, at the time difference yeah. uh, between two teams that are going to play, you know, very soon. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think no, it should it's... be AFC, AFC, NFC, NFC. Anyway, but anyway, I'm very disappointed. That Josh Allen, I, I love him so much, dude. He's one I love of my him favorite too, dude. I, dude, I, I would not be Matt, mad if Josh you love Allen him got because a because he reminds you of Cam Newton. Yes, and Cam, I love him because the the Bills are like the they're the pseudo Panthers, and Josh Allen plays like him, and it's just a lot of fun to watch. And he's awesome, and every time he throws the ball, it rules. And I think it's <laughs> yeah. the sixty yard pass. I'm, I'm he, upset that he lost. The 60 yard pass to Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis also shout out to him. Four touchdowns today. Oh yeah. How did we how did we just go this entire like rant without talking about four touchdown NFL record Gabriel Davis? So we were talking about overtime. He didn't get a chance at the ball. We were talking about overtime. Gabe Davis, I mean, he was really good for them last year. Like Gabe Davis was not yeah. didn't show up on the box score, but every time they threw get Dave, Gabe Davis the ball last season, it ended up good for the Bills. And, you know, Diggs didn't do too much today. I, I guess I, w- I don't know exactly. I assume brackets and, and whatnot. And, I mean, you know, the, the plays were kind of going on so long that I think a lot of it had to do with scramble drills. And Gabe Davis was simply getting open. So, um, but, you know, he carried the load today for them. And, you know, <laughs> Mike Hughes looked like he got shot with a sniper rifle on that. <laughs> would pseudo game the the go ahead touchdown with like a minute le- left. Yes. I mean, Gabe Davis was torture guys making extremely difficult catches. I mean, Diggs had an insane catch. That was a ridiculous catch to get that two point like conversion two and point, a big one to get it because that, that would have that was, ended up being huge. You know, great throw by Allen, rolling to his left across his body, found the window. Yeah, yeah he's ridiculous. He's and the Bills good. also they need so a good, good. they. They picked two. They picked two edge rushers last year, but neither of them are elite pass rushers. And I think Rousseau is a very solid run defender right now, and he had one nice bull rush. But like, they need someone with. They still need someone with like legit moves. I guess Hughes is all right at that, but I don't know. Bills could maybe isn't still a, use someone there. Isn't uh, Jadavius White got hurt? It's, I don't know. Bills are really good though, and they'll agent? be good for a long time. That's they're that's really the good. Takeaway. Yeah, <laughs> they're really yeah. good. Darius a free agent. They're good. Chiefs are e- good too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I thought I thought yeah. the offensive line for the Bills played pretty rough, and Allen made do. Um, yeah, there was that one play where he picked up a play with his legs where um, he had to make like and, two the guys. The fourth and four, you're like, the, the this is the game. You can't give the ball back to the Chiefs. Yeah, and he yeah. broke like two um, tackles and and got the first down. He did everything, everything. Yep. I mean, yep. I think yeah. I saw a tweet today and I, I responded today where it's like people think people think Josh Allen is what people think Cam Newton was, was the tweet. And I got a little offended at that because prime Cam Newton was no was no overrated player. All right underrated if no. anything but i mean jo- i think yeah. josh allen is every bit as good as like like prime not, josh allen is they're not is, quite the same cam newton's arm wasn't quite as explosive as allen's is which is you know true for everyone yeah. maybe <laughs> yeah um, right. everyone but ever. allen probably wasn't quite the runner that cam was yeah i mean cam's pretty high on the um, all-time like rushing touchdowns list he's like 25th uh, yeah no, no, cam, he's, he's, cam newton was is still probably the best red zone quarter quarterback at least as far as taking the ball and getting them I mean, there even himself. when he was in new england they were still using him like that because he's just so <laughs> yeah. dangerous down there um but yeah so uh, but they, do, they do play very similar Anyway, Allen will win an MVP. Week. Allen will win an MVP at some yeah. point. And um, honestly, yes. he's had good cases both of the last two years with the Bills running game being like mostly him. 
You know, like he's kind of the biggest player in the Bills running game. And you saw that tonight and the things he unlocks with his arm, like he, the Bills would kind of be no like he's, he's as valuable as anyone is in the league, man. And, and we talked a lot about the Bills. The Chiefs deserve a lot of credit as well. Um, John Reed, I thought played a pretty nice game. Um, Nick Bolton played a really nice game and Nick Bolton is a guy he, I liked, I liked his film a lot in college. He was such a, a tone setter. Like he was just a big hitter. He really would, did a nice job, like lineman climbing to the second level. He would get right around him right away and make tackles. But it's like, he's a little thick and like in coverage against these some dynamic athletes is he really the modern NFL linebacker, I thought. So I really liked watching his tape, but I'm like, I don't know if he's really quite the modern NFL linebacker. And he had a fantastic rookie season. He played really well today, making plays all over the field. So shout out Nick Bolton as well. Um, one thing about the playoffs is it gets too focused on quarterback play. And everyone yeah. thinks the games are won and lost via the wow. quarterback. So in all of these games, I mean, I'm going to try Bill, to shout Bill's out. Bill's Chiefs. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's hard, it's hard not to talk about it's hard. this. This guys. was the quarterback game, but for all these other yeah. games, it's not just going to be quarterback, quarterback. But these ge- these two quarterbacks were playing at the most elite level that you could well, play at quarterback. I, so. I think we can but talk about two other guys that were MVP candidates in the Rams and Bucks game. Yeah. Uh, because one of those guys folded. <laughs> This, this, yeah. was, this was almost like the I, I biggest know. I'm, just, I'm just playing into the Tom the Brady NFL slander season. a little bit. That's the thing. Like, um, there's so was, much slander, in- and there's so much with the NFL playoffs. Like, if a quarterback loses, there's they get except for Allen tonight because no one in their right yeah. mind would try to do that. But if a quarterback loses, they get slandered. If, if they play anything other than like picture perfect pristine, they're like, oh, they folded, they sold. Um, yep. I didn't think Brady played a bad game at all, even even in the first half, like when he, when the Bucks couldn't get anything going. The line was just losing. Just mm-hmm. it's like Donald was just winning every single snap. We, and when he wasn't that, winning, Von Miller was about. winning. That, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what we said. Like the O line was going to be a problem. I, They're too uh, banged yeah. up. I was watching that game and I'm like, man, if the Bengals and Rams match up Dude. in the Super Bowl. <laughs> It's, it's not going to be a good day. It's for not going to be I'm a good afraid. game. No, it's not. No, it's <laughs> that's not. The, that's probably the matchup I'm cheering against. Yeah, um, it'll, it'll be very tough. Either be of very the either of the NFC, uh, the Bengals. That's the thing about Broncos the Bengals. So we'll get to the Bengals. Is like the Bengals are. It is. It is incredible that they're here, considering you know how they were regarded this this off season. Not just by me. I know I was even lower <laughs> on them, but like. This was a team no one thought would be here. Let's be real. Like, this was a team that was a Sharpie in last place in the A. So, it's incredible that the Bengals are here. But if they play the way they've played these last two games against the Chiefs or in the Super Bowl, they're kind of... Like, the Bengals are not on the level of the two teams that we just saw play in in the... Anyway, we'll get to the Bengals later. But, yes, yes, dude, the the Rams pass rush was just... And Werfs, I mean, kind of shows you how valuable he, like, if they would have had a solid right tackle, you know, yeah. you can manage it. But yeah. Donald was winning no matter where he was. And then whoever was on, um, what's his name? I'm forgetting the name uh, of their right tackle. I'm dumb. I should know this. Uh, anyway, um, well, like, yeah, he was just losing no matter what. So Brady was, Brady in the first half especially was under... Mahomes in last year's Super Bowl level pressure right away, and yeah. it's just impossible to play quarter. It's imp- it's impossible to play quarterback in this situation. Now, well, a lot of people, myself included, were giving Stafford a huge pass of like, oh my god, look how good Stafford looked. The Buccaneers secondary was a dumpster fire. I mean, yeah. they gave up two basically. Big. I mean, they were the, they, probably the easiest plays to Cooper Cup I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> there was been debate on what exactly happened there. My personally, I think it was stupid to blitz. I, I get the logic behind it. I get the dumb call, in my opinion. Didn't, I don't think uh, you should have done that. Um, well, uh, who was you were the one Browns play away from getting into them into like, or just going for a hail mary mode and getting the thing to overtime. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think my thing with the blitz call is like that. it's it is it. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have called the cover zero there, but 
it's bulls, dude, and and buccaneer like bulls and zero blitz. You know how you know how if it's like if you have a really good quarterback and the game's on the line and you run it, you'll get slandered. It's like put the ball in your best player's hands. This is like the almost a defense equivalent to this, where it's like bulls is the blitz guy and and bulls is bulls defenses blitz you. So in the gotta have it situations, you're going to what they're the best at, you know, and and you're trying to get Stafford to do something dumb because Stafford's not immune to screwing up, you know. <laughs> he he no, this season no. he's had plenty of bozo moments, but yeah, co- playing cover the, four. The, I don't, but I don't think between, I. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the gap between like a sack and giving up a first down is very minor in that situation. Like if there was, if there was enough time for the Rams to drive down the field legitimately, but how much time was left? They, if, Not much. I mean, if you had gotten, if you had gotten one more play, like if you had gotten one more incompletion out of them five seconds later, they wouldn't have had time to throw a bomb yeah. down the middle of the field. You would have been totally limited them to like, it's got to be out of bounds or it has to be a touchdown. And I just, yeah. I just think it, it's, too, it's just too risky. I, I remember a Jets is. defensive coordinator getting fired over a zero blitz before. Um, yeah, oh, and everyone yeah, thought they were tank. That, everyone, yeah, yeah. Greg Williams did, and everyone is like, "This is proof yeah. they're tanking." No, some defensive coordinators are just like that. And I thought this was a really good. Dif- I thought this was a really good, um, a better defensive game than maybe the the final score because thirty to twenty seven is pretty pretty high scoring game. But I, I really liked what both front sevens were doing. I liked how the Rams brought a lot of pressure the whole game to ensure mm-hmm. that Donald mm-hmm. was getting those one on ones. Because if you're bringing five and there's five linemen, you gotta it, there's going to be all one on ones, and that's what the Rams were doing. I thought it was a really smart way to approach it. Blitzing Tom Brady is a scary thing. All right, yes. blitzing Tom Brady is a scary, scary thing to do. Taking guys out of coverage, but the Rams did it, and. Um, I thought it was. I thought it was really interesting to. Uh, I, I that, think you know, you, they were I getting these Donald one on ones. In this game, it makes sense. They were limited at receiver. You trust Ramsey one on one by himself, and if you need to double somebody, you can. I don't. I feel like that's just like immense trust, and like we have the guys to get this done. <laughs> But overall, this is like the dumbest game I've ever watched. <laughs> this is that's that's what we're ignoring here, trying to like break everything down. Yeah, I have never seen anything like this. Um, <laughs> this was Brady's just, devil luck. Just, just we were watching. No, it this was. I mean, this was just something. Eyes. And people, people, I you know, I jokingly put on my Twitter like this is scripted, um, and so. <laughs> Tampa Bay lost and I said never mind but never mind <laughs> um, how can you watch that and th- like something's up I don't know if it's a script I don't know if someone sold their soul <laughs> I don't know if there really is a football god and they wanted the game to end like this but the, the, you turning the ball out over Tom and a snap going 30 <laughs> yards backwards and short on a 47 yard Th- field that goal. was the craziest part it's like perfect Florida weather a good kicker just coming up short, <laughs> a short, yeah. just like that's 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 a that's an act of God. They don't, they don't come up pro, short not just on forty seven yards in all pro like kicker, a good right? portion of high school games. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it, it was crazy. Mean, it just doesn't to ice the game. It just doesn't make any sense. And then the Rams had the ball with four minutes up. What like? Two scores, or they, maybe they were up once. I don't. I don't really. I think they were up two exactly scores, like, and they and went. Th- yeah. They were up three two and scores, out and, and the the game still got tied up. <laughs> and but it, it was it was awesome because it was. It looked like Stafford was was going to, and I know it wouldn't have been. I don't know if I would have blamed Stafford for the loss, although he had some no. he had some rough throws. But it looked like the Stafford narrative was going to be. There were no bad a picks. There were fumbles. It was game. fumbles. Yeah, there was there were some bad throws. There were a few bad throws, but um, Cam Akers fumbling twice. I think okay, Cam Akers fumbling twice. I want to talk about because there are coaches when they're running back fumbles and they have a guy like Sony Michelle on the bench who carried the load for most of the year. They would bench that guy, right? Belichick would bench Cam Akers after fumbling. Mm-hmm. Yes. Arians would probably bench Cam Akers after fumbling. 
And when they didn't bench Cam Akers, the broadcast gave uh, McVay a lot of credit, like, ready to go for not benching Cam Akers after the fumble and showing confidence <laughs> in him. But then he fumbled again. <laughs> like, like everyone gave, like... <laughs> I hate to say it, but maybe there's something too. just like when a running back fumbles, it's, just it's, being like you're done. I, I don't I know. I think there is maybe a little bit of a mental aspect to fumbling. Like I remember Nick Chubb went like his first, I want to say like 17, 18 games with no fumbles. And then he played a game against the Patriots. And I think he fumbled three times in that game alone. I think I remember that. I remember and, if it's something like the defense just <laughs> remembers that that fumbling is like a thing. I don't know if that's a thing, but like when you force f- some one fumble, I wonder if the defense like has this mentality all of a sudden it's like, oh, this guy's a fumbler. We're gonna really go yeah. after him now. Like, and it, I that's wonder if that's, all, that's. I don't know if that's true or not. I get, but I'm like, I, I wonder if that's kind of a mental. As someone thing who has never played gets. defense, um, I don't know. So let me <laughs> let me ask you guys this: You think Brady's done? No, 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 no. I don't. There's some talk of it. There's he, some he said, he said, so either, I'll, I'll, I'll take it day by day. And next year he'll be like, all right, let's go back in Tampa. I like, kind of, it did kind of get me thinking. I know we got to talk about the other games. It did kind of get me thinking about what would, like, what's going to happen to the Buccaneers if once Brady leaves? Trask. Trask. Oh, <laughs> Trask. Can you, Trask can you sucks, imagine man. like this team, this team is going to be hilarious. They're going to have like all these receivers and like a perfect offensive line. This is setting and, up to be such a Brady narrative because Trask sucks. Trask, I have yep, like an see, undrafted. It's, it's like it's not like they're going to have even devil a Gardner magic. Minshew level player. <laughs> no, they don't have an. Brady's I had like an, a borderline undraftable grade on Trask, and they took him round two as a successor to Brady. So when Brady leaves and Trask comes in, it's going to look like it's going to look like it, and people are going to be like. Look at the record after Brady leaves, dude. But mm-hmm. in re- but Trask mm-hmm. just might suck. And I get too worked up on these Brady narratives because I, I don't care. Like Brady, I don't get worked up on like ranking quarterbacks all time. Bra- Brady's Brady's got as good a case as he is the greatest quarterback of all time. He is. He's the most accomplished. He is the he is the leader in everything. Now he's got all these rings. Like he is the greatest quarterback of all time. Is he like the best? The most talented? Like. Like is it Mahomes can do unlock a couple more things in the offense. Yeah, maybe sure. But, but, but Brady, I'm not like too concerned about the Brady narratives or, or these quarterback ranking narratives. Like some people are, and they spend their entire life fighting for them, but it is like, it's just funny how things always set up for Brady. Like uh, everything always seems to go his way. And it's, I'll, it's set up this, this expectation where it's like, if a quarterback has a career where not everything goes his way, they're labeled as like a choker because <laughs> mm-hmm, it's like Brady yeah. has set this expectation so high where it's like you have to win every <laughs> playoff you, game. Oh, you didn't sell your soul to the devil. Fraud. You didn't sell your, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll say this. If I was, uh, if I was Tampa Bay and Brady did end up leaving and I had this championship level roster in place and no quarterback, I would, uh, I'd be calling green Bay. Oh. And, uh, the, and then all of a sudden Rodgers would have the opportunity to go win a Super Bowl with Brady's team and show what he could do on that team. That is a very, very interesting hypothetical, Matt. If Brady retires, Rodgers might be sick of Green Bay because Rodgers said, I don't I'm not staying through a rebuild, dude. He said he yeah. said, if I'm I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not staying through a rebuild. And if you look at the Packers cap situation right now. Devonta Adams, free agent. Zedaria Smith posting good bo- thank shout out Green Bay or thank you Green Bay. Is Jair he a free Alexander agent being a free or agent. Is he just? I don't know what he's doing, but he. I don't. I don't. We don't know. There's a lot of. Um, okay. But yeah, no, he's he's someone that's that's contract is ending soon. They would save a lot of money by cutting him by releasing him like thirteen million dollars. And in an off season where Devonte and Jair are free agents. And they're strapped for cash. He could very easily not be in the plans for the future, especially with Rashawn Gary's breakout year. All right. So he's probably done. You don't know what's happening with Jair and Adams. Like this, if Roger's saying, I don't want to be here through a rebuild, there's a first round quarterback behind him, and the cap situation kind of looks like reset mode. I kind of think Rogers has played his last snap with the page with the with the Packers. And you're right, Matt. Like, why? <laughs> 
if 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 there's a lot of ifs, but that's a really if interesting Brady retired hypothetical. And Rogers wanted to play and he didn't want to play for the Packers, which is like not an impossible setup. The Buccaneers make so much sense. And so he would avoid Rodgers, he'd be in a division that has you, no answers anywhere else at quarterback, right? Panthers, no yeah. answer. Falcons, no answer. Like, because everyone is like, oh, Broncos. The yeah, Broncos like, are in a division with I don't want to go. I don't want to go play Herbert and Mahomes four <laughs> times a year. Even the AFC North, like, oh, Steelers. Her- Burrow kind of looks like that guy. And, First of all, and the worst Lamar quarterback in the West. The worst and, quarterback in the West is Derek Carr. <laughs> Bro, what? Yeah, right. I mean, it would <laughs> it would be loaded. So I love that I hypothetical. Know. That's such a going from Brady to Rogers, and then of course I'm, like. Rodgers wouldn't oh win a Super God. Bowl and it would just be it would be just such a well, <laughs> narrative. No, here's what would happen for the record. If it does happen, the Buccaneers probably won't be able to bring everyone back. And Again. all of a sudden the roster will be good, but not like stupidly stacked. All of our receivers are great. Our offensive line is perfect. We keep yeah, everyone on defense. No Antonio. And the Brown, roster would be a little bit worse. No and the team would do a little bit worse. If Brady and, retires, I bet Gronk retires. Yeah. True. And then, yeah. And then there'd be no Gronk and it would all of a sudden, the, but the narrative would just be like, they went from and whatever Rogers, they gave up. Brady to and whatever they and gave up in the trade. Changed. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. whatever they gave up. Although I'm trade. assuming they would just give up like a world picks. of picks or whatever. One more thing I want to talk about in this game. Um, mm-hmm. This playoffs in general was a good indicator of like why you don't you why you pay some positions that like positional value may not say are worth big money or are replaceable and when you look at levante david and 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 vita vea nose tackle one of the things that let tampa come back into this game and why i like even when they were out why it didn't quite feel like they were totally out of it is from the very the 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 starting gun the Rams could not run the ball. They could not get anything going on the ground, just like the Eagles couldn't last game. All right. And Vita Vea played insane. Um, Roches, uh, oh, Qu- 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 Nunez Roches, right? He had a really good game. Um, both the linebacker with Devin White played okay. He definitely was not flawless, but the run defense was just suffocating. All right. And you can't run the clock out if you can't run the ball. And it was just, mm-hmm. they, it, it opened the door for more mistakes, right? And and like the the Buccaneers front seven did a really good job letting this game like never be over. Because when you have to pass it all the time, it opens the door for more turnovers. It opens the door for more three and outs. So this Buccaneers front seven, um, again they 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 brought a lot of people up into the um, up into the box, uh, some bare fronts, creating a lot of one on ones to to stop the run and make make them pass it to put the game away instead of making them run it to put the game away. And they did a really good job with that. And more than Brady, I thought the Buccaneers front seven uh, did, did a really good job keeping them, keeping them in this game. And that's the thing. It's not all quarterback. Everyone makes it all quarterbacks after the, after the playoffs. It's like and, this and quarterback, the Buccaneers won, this quarterback secondary lost. did a great job of shutting them out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it's not just the quarterback, all right, guy. Like that's yes. one thing I'll talk about: strategy. Um, you know but, how many, how do okay, how do you set I, your fronts? How do you play your fronts? That, that, that throw it, by especially Stafford. In this game. Hey, that, that was money. Stafford. That was big time. That was narrative. Change. That's the most important throw of his career, most likely. Oh God, yeah. Um, oh, God, like yeah. It, it was, you know, like a broken defense. But Winfield was catching up. Like there are a lot of quarterbacks that are under throwing that ball. Mm-hmm. And Winfield probably, totally on the he, money. He probably doesn't intercept it, but he probably makes a big enough play that it's incomplete. Yeah, it's that, yeah. That is, and it's it's just is, crazy to think that Stafford was this close to being on the Carolina Panthers, and instead he's making <laughs> a throw like that in the NFC Championship game. You know, he, he he's like, I don't want to play for them, and I can't be mad. He's so right. That was such a good call. Yeah. Yep, I'd rather but, play um, for Sean McVay, and that's again the Rams role. again talking about like maybe <laughs> like, maybe positional value and like what you do and don't give. Oh, they gave up too much. Oh, you know you could have spent your resources a little bit more. Golf is losing this game. Golf yep. is yes. not. Yep. Golf is losing this game. And if yes. you don't have and Von Miller, and if you don't have Von Miller, you're probably losing this game also. 
Yeah, All we right. needed um, everybody. And you we, needed we, everybody. Were, we were critical. We were critical of of the Rams trading away maybe all their picks and it's like yeah, I don't know because they're, they're kind of screwed if they don't win a that. Super Bowl here but yeah <laughs> but, but they, at least it was a risky process but but it it looks like it's working out but there was a there's a decent amount of people who um would argue that Stafford was not that big an upgrade over golf <laughs> uh, and maybe they did <laughs> give up a lot uh, a lot for him but um it's good to He's see them win a game. Player. Stafford go out there and be like, make a big time throw that you feel like yes. you wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah, no. Stafford played well. Stafford played well, even though they started choking at the end. Um, fumbles had more to do with it than, yeah. than anything else. And, and oh, a yeah. snap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was fumbles. And Stafford was maybe uh, the miscommunication was somewhat on him. I don't know exactly what happened there, but but I yeah. thought Stafford played a good game and it was good to see. I'm rooting for the Rams the rest of the way, man. Odell treated unfairly, I think. Stafford, uh, he's he's a big he's a guy that I like. I think he deserves to win one. Now that my Packers are out, and we'll get into that game yeah. here. Um, I'm rooting for Rams. Um, the Bills are out, so I'm now a Rams fan. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, that's the, uh, that game. It's uh, it's about that time. You, can I, it's about are you that okay? Time. Can I, can I, are, are you okay? I, I texted you if you were okay and you didn't answer. I, I just want to make <laughs> sure you're doing well. <laughs> I, 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 Look, I got worse as the night went on. I, I, we know you went back aftermath. and rewatched the game. Of course you got worse. Hey, yeah, this is what? The, <laughs> well, I want to see what happened. I want to rewatch it. Um, but, um, this, th- what made me more mad was, was, was the quarterback narrative ball that was happening afterwards. And Rogers, I'm Rogers is who he is at this point. And Rogers has said a lot of dumb shit this year. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit sick of his whole act and his shenanigans. And if he's gone this off season and we move on fine. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. But like the, the narrative that Rogers like, Oh, another Rogers choke. <laughs> yeah, kind of, but I mean, this is a dude who's top 10 all time in playoff wins and sixth all time in playoff passer rating. And like, what I was trying to say is like, Rodgers is not a bad playoff performer. He is, has more playoff success than 95% of the quarterbacks in league history have, right? He has more iconic playoff wins and more more playoff moments than ninety five percent of the league's history, right? And if he's labeled as a bad playoff performer, everyone is a bad playoff performer, right? Like like no one's any good at it. And that's when yeah. I was getting upset at the end because I kind of went on some Twitter rants where I'm like, Rod- Rogers did not play this. He, it wasn't a Rogers gem, all right, but it wasn't a Rogers disaster class either. And it just wasn't getting through people's heads. And I was getting a little bit frustrated with that at the end, like trying to point out like this, like, like, and I'll get into why I think Rogers played. Okay. Um, but I agree with you that. I yeah, that's, I was okay. mostly getting mad at that more than, but I was getting a little bit rattled, like as the night went on <laughs> and reading the people, comments, people but, were saying the same thing in my comment section that, Oh, Aaron Rodgers played bad. But like in a game where it was like, and he the didn't play good. That's awful. the thing, which makes it hard to defend. But like, people don't see any gray area between like, yeah. Rogers totally sold and he sucked, and Rogers won this game for his team. Like, the, like yes. there is no, there's no gray area, and I think there, there is kind of a gray area with this game, even but with the points. Like, oh, you only put up ten points. I, I That's a like really it, tough it, thing to argue. It, it's awful weather against a great defense. Like, there's not a whole lot you can really do as an offense, let alone just Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, especially, and here's the thing. Okay, I will tell you exactly, since I rewatched the game, this is why we'll, we'll rewatch the game, because I wanted to know exactly okay. what happened. Did Rodgers sell? Who sold? What was the problem? All right, here you go. The 49ers were rushing for nothing fancy. All right, not a whole lot of blitzes, not a whole lot of stunts. All right, rushing for straight up. And they were getting some pressure with that. And whenever you can get pressure... With four guys not doing anything fancy, it gets really tough sledding for the offense. The other thing that was happening in the secondary with the coverages was a lot of disguise. Um, when you think of a Mike Zimmer defense, you think of middle linebackers mugging up the, the middle of the line of scrimmage, the A gaps, and dropping back, or or you never know who's coming and who's not. And 
as soon as the ball is snapped or right before the ball is snapped, the safeties would spin from two high to one high. And there was, there was occasionally the, the, the linebackers on the line of scrimmage and then dropping back. They were creating a little bit of confusion and making Rodgers hold the ball a little bit longer. And, and they were able to do this with a lot of defenders in coverage because they just needed four to get home on this offensive line. All right. So you got all these disguises. You got Brack, Cobb and Lazard weren't doing anything. They weren't getting open. And it put a lot of pressure on, on Adams and they could bracket Adams, right? You could put two guys on Adams and you need the other two. So what was happening is checkdowns. And Aaron Jones, I don't know how many receiving yards he had in the first half, but it was a lot. And Rodgers was more than content to play the, the Tom Brady checkdown game and, and hit the running back and drive down the field, dink and dunk it up the field, hit, hit Adams on the slants whenever he was single covered. Okay, easy. And they got an opponent, they scored on the first drive. They got an opposing territory and Mercedes Lewis, Lewis fumbled, all right, in, in 49ers territory. And then the blocked field goal happened. That should have, that Rodgers did enough in the first half to win that game with these dink and dunk stuff. All right. They were, they were being confusing. There was, there was pressure, but he was just dinking and dunking down the field. Then the weather started to get bad and you could, and AJ Dillon, the power back got hurt and you could see these checkdowns and the offenses grinding to a halt and, and Jones not being able to make guys miss in the snow like he was in the first half and neither offense could get anything going. And then it came down to the special teams and the touchdown on special teams and Debo Samuel just being a, a, a that guy. All right. So that's why I say it wasn't totally Rogers' fault because because it was just tough sledding, dude. It was tough, tough, tough sledding. And on the last play, on the last drive, um, that shot to Adams when he was double covered was a stupid decision. Lazard was open and, and Brown was probably a better bet there. And even on the play before that, he forced the ball to Cobb. He... In a gotta have it situation, he locked on to his guys, the guys he trusts, Cobb and Adams. Yes. And he was gonna throw it to them no matter what. And he was trusting them to make a play. And he shouldn't have he shouldn't have been so locked on to those guys. That was legitimately a horrible drive by him, and it was mm -hmm. in clutch time. And that is what everyone is left with. Bad decisions. But I don't think Roger he played like a C plus game. All right, not like this total disaster class. And people were acting like it was a Rodgers disaster class. And it's okay. I get hating Rodgers. All right. He's but kind of like, a prick. Okay. Think about it like this if you're an A plus student, a C plus is a disaster class. Yeah. But in the playoffs, there's a lot of C plus performances. <laughs> like it I is just it. hard to be, Same. it is hard to be a plus. I, I, I'm not totally defending Rogers here. It was a C plus performance and you expect more from him, but it was really tough sledding for any quarterback. I mean, Garoppolo played horrible and Garoppolo yeah. isn't a good quarterback, but I mean, he could have thrown three pick sixes. He was taking sacks left and right. I mean, he couldn't get anything going. There, there were two nice passes that were dropped early, but after that, it's not like Garoppolo was, was, I mean, Garoppolo did not they didn't, they scored that, that offense scored three points and that's a pretty good offense. All right. The conditions were just tough sledding for offenses, two really good defenses. No, Rogers did not play great, but he didn't play. They should have had that game wrapped up. He played well enough to win that game, you know, and, and, and it sounds like I'm just making excuses for him. But, it, you know, the special teams was just so bad and, and the conditions were, were, I think, tougher than people maybe give, give them credit for. But not saying that was a great game by Rodgers. It's not like some huge Rodgers excuse, but he, he didn't play like it was not a disaster. All right. It wasn't like a Tannehill played worse than Rodgers did, I thought. But, you know, yes. did Rodgers didn't play great. He didn't play horrible. There, there is a middle ground that exists that people don't want to talk about. But I said that's me talking I said, for like 10. I said on Twitter. That's like that 10 minutes the, of me talking. You guys talk now. I'm done. I said on Twitter that the worst thing that can happen to you is like your favorite quarterback losing a big playoff game. And then you got to go on. On. Um on the app and watch just the worst narratives that you're not allowed to argue <laughs> against and the worst jokes. And it's especially bad with Rogers. It's almost Cam Newton esque where it's like people wanted him to lose so bad that it doesn't, it doesn't matter that it was an average game. Because it was Rodgers, it was going to like, be even, the It was worst even like a slightly, game. it was a slightly below average. Like I, again, it, it was the worst because it's like I can't even totally defend it. But it wasn't quite as he's not like this horrible playoff choker. Like I said, 
he's still top 10 all time in playoff wins and, and six all time in playoff pass. Like he's not this horrible playoff choker, man. And today wasn't like all on him, but if he's again, good, why didn't he win the Super Bowl? Hmm. <laughs> Thoughts. Yes. Breeze only won one and Marino only won one. I like the amount of like Flacco comments I saw, or like, this is why Eli is clear, like unironically in my comments wow. section was just, was just disgusting. Wow. And that's, that's why I was kind of mad at the end of the night more than the immediate aftermath. <laughs> Because it's like, this shouldn't be that hard if you understand football and understand, like, there's more. It's not just a quarterback one on one like in you and your friend at a pickup basketball game. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Dan Marino does it's, not have a Super Bowl, by the way. I, he does not. Yeah. He does not. And, like, yeah. And and Manning only has one, yeah. and or he has Peyton Helmy has one when he was a good quarterback. You know, his second one wasn't even like Manning being good; it was just like the defense being generational. Oh, but he has, only has one, and don't talk about that, man. And I don't know how many. I don't know how St- Steve Young. How many does he have? Two. Uh, I think he technically has three, but he only played in one. Yeah, maybe yeah, he I might technically no have three, idea, yeah. but um, he does also have the record for most passing touchdowns in a Super Bowl. So you get a pass for that. <laughs> Steve Young is a baller. Anyway, tons of baller quarterbacks. Just, you know, the best quarterbacks of all time are not in a list. Brady, Bradshaw, Aikman, Montana. Like, those are not the top four quarterbacks of all time. Like, some generate some really good quarterbacks who you'd love to have on your team. Um, just, Steve I'll, fucking Young. I'll say, I'll say this, too. There's one, <laughs> one other thing I saw a lot. Is yeah. that this was proof that, like... Roger, like like the whole uh, Tom Brady's had very good defenses for a long time, and Rogers finally had one, and he couldn't do anything with it. You, it's not getting it one time isn't you know guarantee that you're going to go win a Super Bowl. You know, yeah, it's yeah. it's more about the consistency of which you have them. And he did have a very good defense, and he didn't play that great of a game. But there's also years where Brady had a great defense, and he didn't get it done. Um, yeah. But and he, like, had, this is, he had them year after year after year after year. I'm not saying that's you know an argument for Rodgers over Brady, but I saw a lot of people say this proves. Yeah, and, and I don't think that I, defense. I think the, I think the bigger had thing a is turnover. That, like I, I don't, I don't think they really got they any let short up six field points. They let up six okay. points, but they didn't get any short fields. And in those conditions against that defense, who was playing so well. Um, short fields has a lot to do with it as well. I'm not saying that the defense played phenomenal. Okay, out of their minds. Like that was a really good defensive game. And how long has have Rogers fans been saying, Oh, if he got a good defense, imagine what he could do, and then he did do it. So it's a rough look, but like and it's it, not a good look. I, That's the thing. It's like not even like a good look for Rogers. It is a bad look, but it's not people take it too far. But anyway, um I don't know. Yes. I, I, I said this on TikTok, I'll say it again here. I don't think it's a problem with the defense. It's just it's always something when it comes to the Packers. Whether <laughs> right. whether it's coaching or defense, or in this case, I think the biggest problem was special teams. And it was <laughs> a problem right. that was highlighted earlier in the year um, when they played the Bears. And Theo, you said that wasn't even their worst performance, but that one sticks well, out. Well, yeah, to me. it was, but but they're always, like <laughs> something goes wrong <laughs> like, every week. Like I'm not kidding. Like they're, yeah. they're special teams. But like that, when they're that in prime time, in everyone sees it. Was, but so many just like stupid special teams errors where special teams should be something that you just need to get right. You yeah. don't have to be great at it, but you need to get it right. And obviously someone has to be the worst in the yeah, league don't, at it. Don't, don't let people block your punts. Yeah, like <laughs> for touchdowns. Um, block. Block yeah. on block for, when you're punting. Special block teams was more was, of a problem was than so Aaron funny is, because it got blocked and then it looked like the Packers were just like, well, I guess that's it. Because they don't know what to do because like, they're not coached. <laughs> they're not coached well. They're not coached don't, well. Don't they literally don't blocked. know what to if do in these situations. Blocked, find the football. Do not okay, let them even, pick even up if, the football even if the and run for a touchdown. Even if the 49ers get the ball at the five, are they scoring a touchdown? I'm not sure. They they I'm probably are, certain. but and like on the final kick, what they had ten guys out there, right? And and the kickoff and that doesn't that was, matter, but it's 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 still just like get it right, dude. It's it's yes. week get nineteen. Get eleven dudes out there. It's week it's week twenty. You've had twenty yes. weeks. You know, in th- if anyone yes. any of my theater people out there, you rehearse. This is is not different in sports. You rehearse things for twenty weeks. It's okay if you screw it up week week one or in a practice in training camp. If I practice something for 20 weeks, 
I like to think I'd be pretty good at it after all those months. And like, again, they've got Tyler Lancaster on the blocked pit punt or on the block field goal, just not blocking. They just like stood there and like, let the guy go by him. And then like, I don't, I don't know what quite happened on the block punt. And then 10 guys it's, it, and like the, the, the field position they got returning kicks. It was awesome. They were getting the ball at like the 40 yard line every time. So even when they, the defense was forcing punts, you know, Rogers and the offense had the, had a whole field to go down. It, it was just a spe- like the special teams, like it was the like worst. the special teams was was by far the biggest problem with this. They they obviously win this game with better special teams. And I knew Rogers this was going to be a special teams to disaster after the Packers scored and they kicked off and the 49ers had the ball at the like the forty, and I'm like, That's it happened the first every time. Kick return. And I was <laughs> like, this just. Time. I was like, I was like, nah, time. this is going to be one of those games, isn't it? Yeah. Also, and it, and it was. Also, was shout bad. out Fred Warner. Fred Warner was incredible oh, in this game, and that's another guy where it's like a lot of like, oh, never pay inside linebackers. That's a lot of money for an inside linebacker. This is another. Not Forty Niners won a playoff game because of him. All right, they won a playoff game because of Fred Warner because of his forced fumble on Mercedes Lewis. Um, he was locking down tight ends the whole game. He was he was. T- tackles for loss. He was all over the field. He was sniffing out screens. Fred Warner was amazing in this game. And sometimes, you know, it, it, when you're trying to win a playoff game, the common theme here is who, who won these playoff games? You know, for the Bengals, it was Chase. For the, for the, for the Rams, it was Stafford and Cup and, and Aaron Donald and Von Miller. Um, you know, for the, for the, for the Bills, for the, uh, for the Chiefs, it was Tyreek Hill and it was, it was Kelsey at the end. Like all these close playoff wins at the end, at the end of the 49ers game, Debo Samuel was the one who picked it up. At the end of the day, you need good players. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't, it doesn't totally matter if they're a middle linebacker or a safety or something. The goal is just to compile, compile as many good players as you can. And if you know, you have one pay him. And I want to start a new series yeah. talking about context and analytics because I think it matters so much. And I think that's where a lot of like the gap between like analytics people and football people comes from is like, Oh, don't pay this middle linebacker. He's not like other middle linebackers. What yeah. have you seen him play? You're not <laughs> right. just like, he's not just like sitting in the box the whole time. I was, I was in a, f- a fight with uh, Josh like, Hermsman Zayer, I think like the whole year or early in the year. When he was like, well, you could have paid Fred Warner all this money, but I would have paid Christian Kirksey this like way less and and gotten a similar deal. Like that's how a better use of resources. No. I don't like maybe you pay Kirk, Christian Kirksey way less and you sign and you have this extra money to sign someone else. But I don't know. Fred Warner won them the playoff game. It's, He's been it's solid. also like the top of the top of the guys at their position, any position. Yeah. Don't hit free agency. You can't just go spend money to get them. Right. It's not an option. A bunch of mid players is not winning a, su- a Super Bowl. Like, yeah, like you, like, can, oh, you, can maybe, you can maybe, you can maybe, I don't know. You, uh, it's, it's bad. And it's and like, you got to budget somewhere, but when you get a great piece that you can't get unless you pick them yourselves and draft them and they're yes. so rare to get, and there's so few of them like that in the league. You stop thinking about value. You've just got that guy. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, on Bengals, to the last yeah. game, Bengals versus versus um Jeffrey Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Bengals versus Jeffrey Simmons. What a matchup Joe it Burrow was. Jeffrey Simmons Joe got hit. Versus nine sacks. <laughs> Jeffrey Simmons got his, but at the end of the get, get day, Jeffrey Simmons could not do enough. No. Bengals versus Titans. I'll let you guys talk. I've talked. Offensive much line sure. bad. Offensive line not good. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was it was kind of like I'm a big believer, and quarterbacks always take zero percent of the blame for the sacks, and that's not the right that's not you know the right thing. But some of some of these Burrow really had no hope. <laughs> really, some yes, of these, no. it's like yeah, it's like <laughs> that's it was, another maybe analytics the nine sacks weren't. That's another like. like I watched that. Like, sack. I was thinking if I was out there, I was getting sacked nine times personally. So I'm not going to blame Burrow for getting sacked nine. It wasn't all nine. There were a couple where you got to get rid of the ball, but, <laughs> or maybe not take a loss but as big more, as he did. More than not, um, 
I thought I thought he played a pretty decent game, all things considered. Yeah. And I know that no matter how the Bengals season ends, um, the plan for the offseason has to be <laughs> absolutely everybody outside of Williams has to go. It cannot be like this again. He will get himself <laughs> hurt again, or the offensive line will get Burrow hurt again. But outside of that, um, I don't know. I thought that the Titans kind of got away from running the ball a little bit on some of those drives or they would, they would finally get something picked up and they were just, it was one of those games where you're hoping the other team throws the ball. If you're the Bengals, you're hoping the Titans throw the ball and that's never a good position to be in. AJ Brown played a fantastic game though. He did. Um, I do he, love me he, had one of those, he had one of those catches. You know how sometimes you throw it in Madden or you throw it to somebody and it skips the animation so like the catch or the throw, and so the ball just like leaves their hands or just teleports it just into like, their hands. It just on that touchdown, to it. it just like went right into his hand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no, it, like, I know. Just, it just went it just right like there stuck and there. It didn't and it, move at all. Like yeah. usually, ju- usually, like there's like a process where you got to get control of the football, and it like you know, they'll bobble it a little bit, and then they'll get control. There was no like he just had control of the football as soon as it like touched his body it was weird <laughs> aj brown up man i've i've been pushing the aj brown narrative that guy has no oh, dude, you were going wife. nuts on the aj brown narrative that game the, that and like before the season i was i was really high on aj brown and he didn't have the numbers type of season but i'm still just as high on him as i was before the sure. year and oh. and i i think that that guy you look at the routes he was running in that game you look at the catches he was making um he wasn't doing too crazy much after the catch but he's capable of it he's capable of being you know maybe not debo after the catch um but he's capable of being like this a top top tier rack guy and he wasn't really in that game but he doesn't even need to be that he's not a he's not some rack merchant out here all right he, he is can, the he can be what you want him to be whatever you need he's him to be fide real deal elite mm-hmm. wide receiver in this league and some people are going to look at the box score and say Oh, he hasn't had like a 1500 yard season yet. He will. I swear to God, he will one of these coming. Here's, here's my thing with the Titans. First of all, the Bengals did, I think, a really good job containing the Titans run game. They wanted to run the ball. DJ Reader Reader had a really good game. And, and there were times where I felt like when the Titans were getting the run game going, it felt like they wanted to ease off just in case the Bengals stopped it again. Yeah, they wanted it was the, like quit yeah. while you're ahead. Type yeah. it, that's what it felt it's, like. It's to a, me, like quit while you're ahead. Bad contract but, though. It's not a position of value. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid. <laughs> hey, hey, DJ like Reader, that. you gave a nose tackle that much. DJ Reader was the MVP of the whole game. MVP of yes. the whole game. He was. He was just a blunt force trauma object in the in the middle of the end. <laughs> Henry didn't look like he was cutting real sharp. With on that steel foot, he there was a fourth and one, and the Titans went for it. And I really thought they should have kicked a field goal there, even though I, I I've been shitting on analytics a little bit on on this play on like before and the things they they think I think a little bit silly, sillily. I'm all for being aggressive. I think they are so right that that going for it on fourth down is the right thing to do in that situation. I don't know, like gut feeling is not <laughs> always the best way to <laughs> make decisions, but. I just did not feel like the way DJ reader and that Bengals front was playing and the way Derrick Henry is just, just didn't seem to have the same kind of like, like Deontay Foreman had a, had a run. And when I watched Deontay for it's like, Oh, there's old Derrick Henry. That's what he's supposed to. And it was like, Oh, that wasn't Derrick Henry. That was Deontay Foreman. Like Deontay Deontay Foreman Foreman had like noticeably more burst in this game than, than Derrick Henry did. So like yeah, I didn't think like, plunging didn't into the front great. with, with Derrick Henry was like really the smartest move. And I didn't think passing it with Tannehill was really the smartest move either. Like, I just don't think like, like the, the Titans, the Titans really overall just didn't have it today. Or if, um, to yesterday. If uh, you're the Titans, what do you do? <sighs> Man, right. <laughs> I've been thinking you've got him. I, I think you have to move on from Tannehill. What are your options Is though? It, is he going to, is he going to, if he's going to be so bad that in the playoffs that you, but like, the other team is hoping that you what, throw? What are your other options? It's like, make a big that's trade. That's where I'm at, Bladen. It's like, like Rodgers might be on the market. Who? Russ? 
Rogers Just like, might be sure. Although he must have been amazing. I mean, what, what, you trade Derrick Henry for Russell Wilson. Like, I, like, what do you have I don't, to I don't give think, up? I don't think the Seahawks, like, picks. I'm just like, yeah, like, what do you, like. I mean, you, if, you, if you think the Browns can make a trade for a quarterback, I don't know why you think it's impossible that well, the Titans could. Because, like, when I think about the Browns making a trade for a quarterback, I'm well, like, Hill's better Derek than Baker. Carr. If I'm the yeah, Browns, I'm getting yeah, more. I'm outbidding. Like, Tannehill's right, not it, the worst. What, He's like, not the you worst. Traded, he can get if you traded you know, Tannehill. Well. If you if you went from Tannehill to Derek Carr, you're really not making that big of a swing, right? You need to make I think a a not a generational change, but you need to make a significant enough change to where you're not losing in the divisional round of the playoffs, and your quarterback isn't throwing Although, three picks in the divisional round. Tannehill is a trade got, piece, so you've you got tra- a good Tannehill offensive tra- line. Yeah. Your yes, your running back had a steel plate in his foot. You got Julio Jones. You have AJ Brown, and the other team is. Praying you pass. Yeah. He's got to put up f- not even f- like three good ones in a row. If yeah, there's, a, if there's a move to significantly. This is this is like um, you know we're sitting here praising uh, the Rams for moving on from golf. Yeah, same deal. Maybe not yeah. quite, quite, quite the same. Ten hills yeah, yeah, golf think, and Baker yeah, by, a, by think, a significant margin. I think Baker That's my is thing. more the bake getting going from Baker to like Carr would be going from I think Goff to Stafford. Um, but like Tannehill, you have to make a jump to like a Russell Wilson. And but at the same time, that Tannehill does be. offer more in trade discuss. Like you could, yeah, if you're I, getting I, Tannehill I, in the trade. But I agree, Matt. Like the is are the Titans going to get a Super Bowl out of the Tannehill Titans? <laughs> kind of uh, tough to uh, say um, yeah it, it's tough i mean it's <laughs> but you know you there's see, jimmy garoppolo uh, right now is in the nfc championship game so anything can happen don't get me wrong like he's, they have he's been they've been that close you can do it with a mediocre okay, quarterback, okay. but okay, your we're odds are about- just so much worse and it's it just seems like if you're telling me right now that i could trade my first and whatever i get from Tannehill in a trade for Derek Carr, I'm doing it in a heartbeat. But Derek Carr, I don't know. I don't know because it's like a lot of this is just like, well, get a really good quarterback. Because you look at the mutants who played tonight. You look at the absolute freaking out of this world, like Josh Allen, Mahomes types. Those are the guys you feel really good about. But those guys aren't just laying around, you know? Like those guys are like, oh, just get, you got to upgrade from Tannehill. That's like Tannehill is not, I think, this this dude who could carry you to a Super Bowl. And it would be, I don't really see the Titans winning one with him. But it's like, man, like going to, do you see the like car in the Titans coming out of the AFC with Josh Allen and, 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 and Herbert and, and all these guys, like is, and, and, and Mahomes. It's like, I don't know if that's like something I see either. So it's like, I'd almost rather build a team and in, in kind of the 49ers mold, instead of using all my, all my picks to try to upgrade a quarterback, especially if that person is car. Cause I don't know. I, I feel like you almost want to go like draft some more linemen, get deeper in the in the secondary, and I almost feel like that might be the better way to win than than trying to upgrade a quarterback. Because if you're upgrading a quarterback, you don't trade a guy better than Tan because Tannehill's like like maybe like fifteenth or or fourteenth. So you're trying to trade for like a top ten quarterback. It, it gets it gets dicey. <laughs> it gets dicey that those Here, guys are available, okay, Theo, you, and they might be this off season. And if Rogers is there, I'm certainly calling. But like, See, I don't Theo, know, you mentioned the 49ers, Garoppolo, but they have Shanahan, right? Do you yeah. think Vrabel, you know, was played a big role in their in their in their losing? No, I don't know. I don't think Vrabel like like. Oh my god, this is just a poorly coached unit out like, there. Today. That, that's what I'm. But, that's what but I'm Vrabel's saying. not so Shanahan. Like, if, if we consider, Vrabel if we consider is Vrabel, not Shanahan. He is but, not Shanahan. But he doesn't have to be Shanahan. Yeah, he does. To win with a bad quarterback or or a mid quarterback, everything else has to be pretty high level. Um I Vrabel guess. people were like, oh, Zach Taylor versus Vrabel, coach two coach of the year candidates. I kind of rolled my eyes at that. Like, I don't think either of those two are like the the quite the highest of the high level coaches. I mean, really the, the coach of the year is Bill Belichick, in my mind. Wouldn't be mad at I, I still I still think LaFleur has a pretty solid shot at deserving. I don't know. I 
I think Belichick is a better coach this year and did a better job coaching than, than Zach Taylor. That's for sure. And for Mike yes. Vrabel. But anyway, I don't think Vrabel. I don't know. If, if I was the Titans, I'd be looking for a quarterback. I mean, I mean the defense it's not the played wrong move great. to look for one. And, uh, the, just, Bengals were not, like, the Bengals were not some impossible matchup, and you still lost. Yeah. So what, what was the point of getting Julio Jones if you can't throw the ball? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's not, are it's the not Bengals impossible. some like elite secondary? No. Yeah. yeah. It, I don't know. It's it, defi- I think it's the right move. It's the right idea, but you're going to have a tougher time, I think, getting someone better than if you're like the Browns and you're trying to move on from Baker or if like you're the Giants trying to move on from Daniel Jones. It's just a harder task to accomplish. And if you do all that, your cornerbacks are still pretty weak. And we haven't even talked about the Bengals in this game. I know we got to wrap it up here pretty soon, but we've been talking about the Titans this whole time. Um, we're about, an, yeah, we're like an hour into this. Bengals, Joe Burrow. Um, I didn't think he played like phenomenal out of this world either of these last two games. Uh, I think the Bengals have to step it up to beat the Titans of the, they've gotten pretty lucky here with a pretty weak one seed in the Titans and a pretty weak uh, five seed in the in the Raiders. All right. Um, so they've got to play better. 77. I can't remember his name sucks ass. All right. That guard cannot play. Um, T Higgins has not been, he closed the season playing a really elite football and really hasn't so far on these two playoff games. Chase is, is chase is on like a Larry Fitzgerald in 2009 or whatever that was run of, of playoff greatness right now. He's been ridiculously good. Burrow has been good. Um, but reader was amazing. But they've got to step it up, uh, and I don't know how they do it. I don't know how you just get better offensive line play, but like they are, they are, they're in the AFC Championship game right now. But they've got to find an extra gear. And I know they had they beat the Chiefs at the end of the year. They slaughtered yeah. the Ravens, so they have that extra gear. They need to tap into it because they've won these two playoff games. Um, and I don't want to hate. I'm the Bengals hater, so everyone's going to be like, "Oh, you won't give them any credit." I'm sorry, but it's true. You look at the games that some of these other teams have played today. The Bengals have not played quite on that level, allowing all these sacks and whatnot. Um, but I, they've got to fi- they've got to find that gear. I don't know how they do it, but they got to find it. I promised uh, Zach, my roommate and Matt and I's friend from high school, that if the that if the Chiefs won. I would root for the Bengals in the AFC Championship game. So, for one game for and one game only, I am part of Houday Nation. You can't hate the Bengals that. Do you hate the Bengals? Like, if the Lions were in this position, they're division rivals of ours. Yes. But I don't care. If the Lions were about to win a Super Bowl, it's not like the Vikings or the, the Bears for the Vikings. Like, I don't think you understand the position that I am in as a Browns. But you're living in Ohio, I guess, so maybe it, it's worse. Hating, hating the other teams in the AFC North has less to do with like, oh, it's not that big of a rivalry compared to like years against the Steelers. It's because we went like a whole decade where we could not beat any of them. <laughs> fair, fair. As so a Packer fan, it's I a little bit different them. where it's like we could like <laughs> We've just been on top for so long watching the Lions win. And win. That, that's how I imagine it is with you, but yeah. you've kind of gotten kicked around by every single team in the division, so I guess that like, makes hate the Lions. <laughs> the Lions are a little bit different. I'm sure, I don't know. I feel like Lions fans are maybe a, a little less aggressive than Browns fans are. Um, well, there's not much for the Lions fans to be that aggressive about, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm just, in terms of like, I don't do the, the do day Lions is, fans. Though. Like, if you're a Lions fan, you know, watching this podcast or is there anything that you are like angry about? Do you like hate the Packers? Do you hate the bear? Do you hate the Vikings? They hate all of those things. They they hate all those things. <laughs> they like to see Stafford winning and they're very defensive yes. of Calvin Johnson's rank all time. Anyway, we're way over. Way over. We're way over. I think Let's that, wrap it up. Yes. That does wrap um, things up for us. Um, as always, tons and tons of content coming away on all platforms. I we I told y'all we we had a lot to say. This was a great this was a great weekend of football, um, and I expect the championship what game are, to be. What what are the what are the odds that Ryan Tannehill next season goes on a run? And like like <laughs> what, what 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 are you, what are we looking at here for a disaster scenario on the replace Ryan Tannehill take? We are it's it's not a high take. It's and and. Matt, if it does happen and anyone were to bring up these random clips from the podcast. That's true. Uh, That's the other thing. I'm, I'm remembering this. No one was like, they got to, you're sleeping on Ryan Tannehill. 
I know I I, I follow some Titans. Even fans Titans not fans are not. Yeah, so are not the Titans gonna, fans are. Okay. This is not me yeah. like low on Joe Burrow when every Bengals fan loved him. Like this is like yes, yes. There's no How staunch dare you line. doubt Ryan. The only Tannehill. People, there's no one like that. The there's only no people that are aggressively high on Ryan Tannehill are analytics guys. That well, isn't. That is true. Anyway, so, on him, I got to be low on. That being said, <laughs> let's let's wrap things up. Again, as always, some sense of contact. Two of the picks platform. in the game wasn't quite. We as will fault. be back. I'll give them that. We will be back th- Friday to preview the AFC and NFC championship games. We're also probably going to touch on a little bit of NBA. I believe we have another guest coming on the show. So do we, we should <laughs> make, we'll get I, one. I believe so. We'll, get one. Believe we'll find so. one. I'll, I'll we'll, ask. Uh, <laughs> we'll think it's something. I, I no, have, I'm I have guys sure, to ask. No, 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 I'm pretty sure we have one. I, I'm pretty sure we already have one. Anyway, I'm, I'm first time <laughs> hearing about it. <laughs> Okay. As always. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, no, I have to wrap things. What? <laughs> goodbye. Hey, make sure you all, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Here are the Stay Hot shout outs from Corn Boy, Lemon Boy, and Gambling Addiction Boy. We'll catch you on the flippity flop. Hey, this is Theo Ash calling in from uh, Arizona. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for coaches. I've, I couldn't do it, you know, to, to, to be so detail oriented while also being a motivator and a teacher. I know they have a hard job. I know what they put into the sport and I, I, I know that and I know what, I know they know more than I will ever know and I know it's a job I couldn't do except for one coach, the Packers special teams coordinator. I think for the Super Bowl halftime show, you know, they've got a good lineup of artists, but I, I think that they should just have them like fight a lion like a gladiator instead. I think I want to, I want to see that. I want to see the Packers special teams coordinator fight a dangerous wild animal as, as, at, as midfield as halftime entertainment. All right. I don't think that's too harsh. Okay. Goodbye. I'm Josh. I'm from Buffalo and I'm going to fall asleep outside tonight. There's a foot of snow on the ground and I'm definitely going outside in my underwear and fall asleep. Hi, this is Colby from Waterford, Wisconsin. Uh, I haven't slept all night. Been crazy nervous about this Packers game. Uh, and I'm still sweating five hours before game time. So I'm freaking out. Don't know what to do. Uh, we need someone to talk to. Goodbye. This is Colby from Waterford, Wisconsin. Last night feels like a bad dream. I feel so naive for believing or having any expectations that the Packers could pull it off. But it still doesn't feel real. I... Uh, my name is Gabe, I'm from New Jersey, and Jimmy GQ over Karen Rogers. I'm afraid 